So I guess we're live. First of all, welcome, and I really want to make my compliments to you in your choice of sessions, because obviously this is going to be the highlight pretty much of Synergy. So my name is uh, Stefan. I'm a domain specialist uh, back in Amsterdam. And uh, today I've brought with me my friend Fernando. Yeah, I'm a product manager for HDX. Yeah, and it's actually a little known fact that uh, there's this pop group called ABBA who made a song about him. But um, so first, I want to start off with a question. Who here really, really loves email? There's always that one. <laughs> OK, so neither do I, neither do we. So this session mostly is going to be about the ways that we make it easier for people uh, to leave email to a side, so to say. So we're going to show you ways uh, of accomplishing that and to really get work done. So the agenda, a quick overview. We're going to start with uh, content collaboration. Then we're going to transition into Slack and integration with endpoint management. Then we're going to talk a little bit about the intelligent workspace, what that means, and we're going to culminate on Microsoft Teams. So previously, in the last episode, Alan and Mayank presented the Citrix virtual apps and desktops and all the flavors that you have to get a virtual desktop. So they talked about the Citrix Cloud and Citrix virtual apps and desktop service. They also talked about the new offering, Citrix Managed Desktops, which was announced this synergy. They also talked a little bit about the WVD offer from Microsoft, which is the multi-user Windows 10 uh, Azure-based offer that they have and how that integrates with Citrix Cloud. And of course, the old school on-prem virtual apps and desktops. Right, so for Citrix Content Collaboration, AKA ShareFile, yes, I know, we are really good at changing product names. Um, just to give you a little bit of background on that, uh, you may steer, still hear the term share file every now and then. That's because we still have that as a separate offering. And we don't really want to confuse uh, the existing customers that only use share file. But when we talk about Citrix workspace and the share, share file aspect of that, it's that, that time that we refer to it as Citrix content collaboration. Now, for those of you that have very little knowledge of that or uh, just want a slight recap, uh, ShareFile is actually, or Content Collaboration, is actually um, one of the first Citrix Cloud services that uh, Citrix had. Uh, we've had it for a number of years. And it's basically a hybrid service where the central part, the control plane, that really defines the functionality of being able to collaborate on files, uh, to share files with other people in a secure and easy way. Uh, the end user experience really is defined in the control plane. The reporting is done there. Uh, you can define policies there. Um, and then where you actually store your files, that's a choice. So that choice could be that you want your stuff on premises in your own data center, on your own storage. Uh, you could put it on your own, your customer-managed cloud storage or trusted partner-managed cloud storage. Uh, then, then again, you could also opt for uh, Citrix-managed cloud storage so that we take care of things like antivirus and such. And then even if you do want us to manage it, there are still some choices if you really want to use, uh, you want us to use AWS for it or Azure or something, then you can still uh, determine that. Now, to get to the part of content collaboration which really makes your life easier as a user or, or person, uh, as I'd like to call users sometimes. Um, the way you use content collaboration is uh, in any number of ways. Uh, we have, of course, a browser UI. We have mobile apps. Uh, there are native clients for OS X and for Windows. 
uh, there's a lot of ways to do it. And that really um, defines what Sharefile is. It's, it's, um, it's a central way to not only get to all your uh, files wherever they are stored, um, it's also a way to share those files, to edit them, uh, to provide uh, a secure way to sync all those files to uh, all your different devices to be able to access them anytime you like. But there are also features in it like uh, being able to provide uh, electronic signature on it, which can be uh, a part of Sharefile. So you don't necessarily need a third-party application to do that. And of, of course, it provides auditing. And the, in this day and age of things like GDPR, this is becoming more and imp more increasingly important. Now, the desktop client, uh, that's a fairly new one. Uh, we have a Citrix Files client for uh, Mac and for Windows. And all, those, all that functionality can be accessed right from the integration of those clients. So within the Mac Finder and within the Windows Explorer, you can just right click on a file and start an approval workflow or um, share that file with someone, whether they are internal or external. And also, what we're going to be talking about now, uh, about the workflows, initiating those, uh, that can also be done right from the integration. Now, feedback and approval workflow is one thing. Uh, the e-signatures I talked about, and actually the most popular way of using Sharefile is actually a plugin for Outlook. Now, the way that works is, and this makes it really easy uh, for people to, to use Sharefile functionality, what people mostly do now is, in fact, uh, start an e uh, a new email and drag a file into it. Now, what the plugin does is it'll actually automatically turn that file into a hyperlink to download it instead of uh, having that whole file as an attachment. So definitely a popular way to use it. And for IT organizations, that also mean that, means that your Exchange server no longer will be used as a storage location, something it was never meant to do. And we all know how bad it can get and how uh, pa frank frankly painful uh, increasing the storage on exchange can be. Uh, so it's a very good way to uh, use that and provide that to your persons using it. Now, what I'd like to talk about specifically today is not so much the feedback and approval workflow, uh, but something a little more advanced, the custom workflows. And custom workflows are really designed to uh, provide a good way to uh, automate tasks uh, and something that uh, some tasks within every organization can take a long time, can involve multiple departments, multiple people uh, to achieve uh, a fairly simple thing. Now, the way we do, do that is uh, we have an editor uh, for that, um, which is basically no code. And we, I regularly say that uh, this should be easy enough for regular people to uh, develop their own workflows. And what I uh, also, I give, usually give, give the example of how easy it is by saying that even Citrix salespeople uh, ha have made workflows. Now, that's saying a lot. I know we're an IT company, but that is an example how, of how easy it can get. Now, I'm just going to start this uh, demo video here. Now, what you do, and in this case, we'll use the web UI to uh, create such a workflow, is that. Uh, in this case, we're going to uh, make an entirely new workflow. Uh, of course, you can uh, pick a current workflow and modify it a little bit uh, in order to create a new one. But just to show you what it's really like, we'll create a new one. So we'll give it a name, and we'll want to store it somewhere, of course. So uh, 
that also enables you to have multiple people uh, working together on the same workflow. But every workflow starts with a trigger. Now, a trigger can be, for example, uh, a modification to a current file or a new file that's being uploaded. Now, that can be a specific file type, uh, but you then uh, specify a folder to be watched. So from that point on, when you start that workflow, that uh, a specific folder will be monitored. Uh, and any time something uh, happens, like a new file gets uploaded or gets changed, that could trigger the rest of a workflow. But for this case, I want to make it a slightly more um, uh, make a, a, a more a better example by uh, showing uh, the true power of what we can do using workflows in creating a custom form as a trigger. Now, in order to do that, um, you can grab a current form that's already made, but in this case, for this demo, we'll create a new form. Now, this form builder. Uh, has some uh, settings, some general settings for the form. If you want a progress bar while filling it out, all that kind of stuff. Uh, if you want the location of the people submitting that form to be included in it, that's all general to the form. And then you can add fields and pages. Now, if you have a lot of fields that need to be filled in, uh, it's always a bit easier uh, to work with multiple pages. So in this case, we're, we are going to keep this form fairly simple, but I do want to show that there are multiple um, pages. And as soon as we get that drop-down field here, there. I'm going to pause this for a second, because when you choose the field type, this is also the, as a, a way that you can already see uh, how powerful these custom workflows can be. Now, all these fields here, uh, something like including contact persons, including the address, this also all shows what you can do with it. And the most of these forms will be submitted through uh, a mobile app, which I'll show in a minute. So a mobile app on a current device, or even a, a slightly older device, most of these devices will have a GPS capabilities. They'll have a camera. Uh, they'll have a microphone. They will have, and these custom workflows can make full use of those things that are available in uh, devices nowadays. So uh, when we specify uh, something, like the camera can also be used as a barcode reader. It can also be used to record video. Uh, can, you can take pictures with it. All that stuff can be uh, used in that form. Now, for this first field, it's, it's pretty logical to include something like uh, the date, uh, which we will do. We'll make that a required setting. And for, I guess we mo won't make it a required setting. Um, So for each field type, there will be some additional questions in how you want to present that field. So for the date, it's fairly simple. Do you want just the date or also the time? Do you want uh, a date range and a time range? Um, but for customer name, do you want a single line of text? Do you want multiple lines of text? Is it required or not? Still fairly simple. And these field IDs, they're all very important as well. Because later on in the work workflow, you can actually use that ID as a wildcard for submitting it into an email or to another web application or something like that. So in this case, I'm choosing the address as a field. And that means geolocation, so using the GPS part of the device. and. The question comes up, uh, do you want to actually show that location on a map, or do you want to just have the lines of text of the address entered? Then you could create a second page. So in this demo, um, kind of using the use case for maybe a field representative uh, 
making a quote for a certain service or product. So then the commercials may be on a, a separate page. And since I'm asking for a price and currency, you, can get, you get to specify if you want all types of currencies to be available or just the two most important ones, dollars and euros. Then we're going to add another field here. And we'll use the, the barcode functionality for that one. So keep in mind, all of this can replace uh, applications that cost tens of, or even hundreds of thousands of uh, dollars to keep around. And this can be, uh, this is functionality that's available right within content collaboration. So we'll add a slider for the probability there with the percentage increments. So it's all still very easy to use. And we'll add, add another page there for this uh, electronic signature. And also, keep in mind that um, aside from this signature, uh, whenever a workflow is triggered, so uh, what we're doing now, if uh, somebody submits this form through a device, then that will trigger a workflow. And that workflow can also include another uh, electronic signature uh, through an approval process from a manager or an, a third person. Now, what we have here is uh, once that uh, form is submitted, you can also post all of that data that was gathered or some of it to another web application. Or you can initiate an approval, uh, export data to an Excel file. In this case, to keep it a bit simple, uh, we'll just send a notification email to another person. In this case, a fictitious person that I created for the demo. You know, add a subject line. And that tag at the right there, uh, the, if you click on that, that means you get to specify a wildcard which was used, uh, which you gained from the, uh, work, from the form itself. So you type a message. You can include more of those tags in there. So you can include the address. You can include the probability. Literally anything you define from that form uh, can be used in the notification. Also, keep in mind that it's not just uh, limited to the one step, uh, because after that step, you can still include another thing. So even if the notification doesn't mean it has to end at the notification. You can still say after the notification that uh, an initial, an, another approval needs to be uh, triggered from there. Uh, and then it needs to be submitted to a third party web application. Uh, so you can build, build the workflow out uh, as far as you want. OK, so I've built the notification email. Uh, then you can decide which items specifically need to be in the notification email included in it. Uh, do you need to add files to it? Uh, maybe existing files that uh, live uh, in a share file folder somewhere. And then you can add people that need to be able to watch and need to be able to at least view that workflow uh, or collaborate on that workflow with you. Uh, when does that workflow expire? How many days from, from when it's triggered? And the file links, when, when should those expire? They're all very basic settings. 
Okay, so we have a very simple workflow now. Um, I've enabled it, and then you get a link to that workflow. So that link can be distributed uh, to people, and I think that's uh, about the end of the that demo. So now this this all just took a couple of minutes, right, to c create the entire workflow. Now, what you can do is um, that workflow can then be uh, filled in uh, through a web browser. But in this case, I want to show what it's uh, the experience for a field agent with uh, an iPhone, in this case, uh, that wants to uh, fill out that workflow. So start the uh, workflow application. Uh, and in this case, I was already authenticated, but you can couple that with multi-factor authentication. Uh, the workflow app itself can be pushed out through a Citrix endpoint management, uh, for, for example. And then it's easy enough to uh, select the date, to type in the customer name, the GPS defined uh, where the address is, in this case, he's, uh, th this uh, sales guy is already at page two, uh, entering the price. We'll scan the barcode, which comes up with the number. He sets a probability for when that deal will come in. In this case, it's uh, very, very likely. And then he'll draw or write a signature. Very, very beautiful one in this case. And then all that's left to do is uh, click on or tap on Submit. Yes, he's very sure he wants to submit it. There you go. It's submitted now. And then it triggers a workflow, and the welcome email will come in. That's really how easy it is. So I definitely. Uh, would advise to uh, see what it's like to get things going and uh, try it out for yourself. Now, we do also have um, a small item on Slack integration in Citrix Secure Mail. Uh, now, I know that we don't have a lot of email lovers in the room uh, from that first question. Um, so one of the most important, one of the most uh, popular apps uh, that come close sometimes to communicating without having to use email is Slack. I know we uh, use it internally a lot. Um, my general rule is that if I get uh, two or at least three emails on the same subject and starts to form a thread, I usually want to take that conversation, because now it's not just uh, an email thread anymore. It's, it's really, for my feelings, it's, it's, an, it's turning into a conversation. I want to move that conversation into Slack. Now, we make that very easy. And the way we do that is, in Secure Mail, there's a feature called Slack integration. And uh, I've, I've prepared a small demo video of how you turn that on. Now, I'll just start up um, my secure mail. And in preparation for this event, I was emailing back and forth with uh, Dan and Fernando. And um, at the first, uh, I'll just scroll back a little bit. Right now, uh, all I can do for that email is uh, forward it or reply it. Right, So that means I don't have the integration turned on. Now, to turn it on, that's what I'll, I'll show now. But this part, you only have to do once. You, have, you can set it and forget it. Uh, so it'll work from that point on. So what you do is you go back to the settings for Secure Mail in the bottom right corner. And then there's the Slack integration preview there. So you just turn that on. And it'll ask you to authenticate to your Slack account. In this case, we have 
uh, secured that with multi-factor authentication as well. So I'll type in my username, and I'll, I won't show you my password, of course. I'll enter my token. And from that point on, the Slack integration is, is there. So this part, you only have to do once. Now, going back to the same email, so you authorize it, of course, and then you get a message saying you're connected to Slack. Now, if I go back to the same email and then click on, uh, tap on the blue button, you just tap on chat in Slack, and then it moves that conversation into Slack. And I can just say, guys, things are going great, and we can move on. Right? Perfect. So we're going to transition now. We're going to start talking a little bit about workspace, workspace intelligent experience, and what that means, what was announced at the keynote, and how that integrates with the rest of the Citrix stack. So first, um, let's make a quick recap. Because Citrix workspace, it's a concept introduced last year. It's relatively new. So I want to lay out the foundations so we are on the same page. So it's composed of a few services. Citrix Workspace includes the original virtual apps and desktops that we all love. It includes the integration with content collaboration. Endpoint management, it's another service bundled in the Workspace offer. And we have access control, which is something that I probably it's the less understood of the four. So access control, it's a way we can provide the users secure access to websites that host uh, confidential information and that you want to secure, for example, by utilizing the Netscaler Secure Web Gateway in our cloud. So whenever they try to access Salesforce, they are proxied through that Netscaler uh, service. Or if the content is not, um, doesn't need to be secured, we allow the local browser to contact the content directly. Or even further, if the content requires the highest levels of security, we can fall back to using secure browser, and in that way, we virtualize the session. All it's transparent to the user and defined via policies. All this is tied up with the <coughs> Citrix analytics and let's get a gateway services. And we also provide the same user experience on every device. This is Citrix workspace, comes in three editions, and has been available um, since last Synergy. But then we have the new kit on the block which is the SAFO integration and the Citrix intelligent workspace. So I'm going to build up the slide. So Citrix intelligent workspace, what that is, let's focus on that for a minute. It's an added value on top of Citrix workspace. Okay? It's a way that we expand that offer and we allow line of business applications to basically cut out micro workflows, simple, simple flows from the application, and send it to the workspace app. So we don't sync the entire application. It's not like we are now getting all the data from Concord and dumping it in workspace app. There are specific actions that the admin defines, and I want to make those available to the user inside the workspace UI so he can interact with and perform actions. Classic examples are um, um, data that comes through Power BI dashboards, or Salesforce opportunities that I want to approve, or expense reports, it's a classic example. So all these feeds now are, are, are aggregated into the Workspace app. The user can interact with them. That triggers a micro-app workflow inside Citrix Cloud, which eventually completes the cycle and interacts with the SaaS application. This is how the UI looks. We're going to show a, a few demos on this, but it's mainly composed of three different areas. The first area inside the intelligent experience, it's composed with the assistance and a search toolbar. Then we have all the actions and activity feeds. This is how we envision users performing uh, a great amount of uh, interactions with the SaaS applications that he needs. And of course, we have the old school app and desktops and Citrix files. So now it's a composite UI that it's not only giving you the access to the virtual apps and desktop, but it's now giving you the capability to interact with the 
applications that the user is most frequently accessing. Now, to build these integrations, um, we are going to offer, I'm saying go to off, going to offer because it's not here yet, uh, of course, as you well know. Uh, but when it will be released, uh, there will be a low-code micro app builder in there as well. Um, one thing to remember there is that the bottom one is pretty important as well. I've got, been getting a lot of questions about that this week. Uh, if we're also going to support uh, on-premises systems, yes, uh, that is the case. Um, so this low-code builder, uh, it, I wanted to show you a bit of how that will work as well. Now, just like the slides we previously, uh, we just shown, uh, the look and feel of this um, is subject to change and it most likely will change um, uh, because we are still uh, working on it and perfecting it. So uh, the micro apps pane from the cloud.com console, uh, you'll likely get uh, something that looks like this, uh, maybe an instructional video to explain uh, what to expect, and then uh, you get started with it. Now, in this case, the integration that you add uh, could be a new one or an existing one that you modify. In this case, uh, we'll choose, at first we'll choose uh, a new one, or I mean an existing one. So we'll select that. In this case, it'll be concur. Um, you go through the domain and authentication what type of authentication, you enter the credentials, click next, and then it'll say what kind of things that we will uh, drag out of the application itself or out of the da database of the back end uh, in, and cache it uh, into that service. And then all you need to do is uh, see what the micro apps are, maybe modify those, and then configure the single sign-on for it, and then you're done. Now, that's still no code, but there will be the option, of course, to uh, really specify some different things that you want to get out of an application and really build out uh, what you want that micro app to show in that UI for Workspace. Now, if you want to create a completely new one, we are going, the planning is to also offer some type of marketplace uh, for integrations. And of course, we've built integration ourselves as well. So this is an example of it, but you go through the same process, uh, enter the URI and the uh, authentication details it tells you what it will, would like to get, so you authorize that. By the way, all the things we cache from one of those applications in uh, uh, the micro app service, uh, they are stored uh, completely encrypted, of course. So that shows a little bit of what the micro app builder uh, will look like. Uh, not much yet, but. I want to also show what it, uh, what it means uh, for the person using it, in this case, Pepper. And Pepper is the VP of sales. So she has some recommended actions up there. Um, she's reminded that, hey, there's uh, holidays coming up. Maybe you should re request some PTO. That's always a good one. So if you click on it, it's actually actionable. It already has some dates up there. Um, you can put a purpose in there and submit it, and it will be submitted, in this case, in Workday, but it can be uh, any kind of system uh, that deals with that, of course. Then there's apparently a, a report pending approval. You can see the details of that before you approve it. You can really get the most valuable information that you need to complete that specific task. I've also had people come up to me this week already saying, uh, but 
this is huge, but how am I going to get all my applications in here? That's not really what we're after here. We're just trying to get the applications in there uh, that you can, uh, that you need to use. Of course, this is an important one because she's got a new account, Los Pollos Hermanos. Um, that you want to get things done quickly in a short amount of time, maybe in between meetings. Uh, and then the workspace assistant can also be used. So apparently, uh, Pepper has a new colleague called Maya or Mia. Uh, she can ask the virtual assistant who that is. And it'll, in a similar way, it'll pull that information out of the backend application itself and get that information quickly. Now, this will work uh, in the Workspace app, not just in a browser, uh, but also on the mobile app. OK. Um, so getting into the last portion of the presentation, now we're going to do a, a deeper dive into Teams. So we look into Microsoft Teams from the perspective of the intelligent workspace. And we look into Microsoft Teams from the perspective of virtualizing the application and using HDX to offload the audio video. So how does the admin configure the intelligent experience? You saw it right now over a video. But this diagram gives you a step-by-step -step of the entire workflow. So the first thing the admin does is log into the Citrix Cloud. It's going to access this new citizen called the MicroApps service. He's going to configure that. And then the user is going to come, log on to his uh, endpoint, launch the Workspace app, connect to the Citrix Cloud. And now the Workspace UI is going to be populated with all the actions that he needs to review or perform. So once he logs in, the Workspace UI contacts the MicroApp service. MicroApp service then connects, for example, in the case of Microsoft Teams through Microsoft Graph. We use a read-only account. We poll Office 365. We get information from Office 365 regarding Teams. Then the MicroApp service is going to contact, <coughs> sorry, the MicroApp service is going to create a card that is required for the user to complete an action. Then uh, the information is sent to Citrix Analytics, which is going to somehow sort all the relevant cards that the user needs to be shown. The Citrix Analytics service is going to contact a notification service, which eventually pushes all the cards to the Citrix uh, Workspace app UI. The user now is displayed um, a card regarding uh, an expense report. And the user now wants to send this information to Teams. He wants to send the expense report to a channel he's member of in Microsoft Teams. So he's going to select that option in the Workspace UI. The information now flows back to Citrix Cloud, makes it back to Microsoft Graph, and from there, it makes it up to Microsoft Teams. This is how it looks on the, from the user's perspective. The user logged into Citrix Workspace app. And there is a um, Salesforce opportunity now that he wants to send. So he clicks on the three dots. He selects Send to Microsoft Teams. He selects the channel where he wants to send the information. In this case, it's the sales opportunity. And he clicks Send. So now the message is sent successfully. You see there at the bottom to Microsoft Team, Teams. And it's consumable on Microsoft Teams itself. So he completed an action from the Workspace app UI. Uh, he integrated with one application, in this case, Microsoft Teams. There are multiple applications we support, um, but in this case, we're focusing on, on Teams. <coughs> um, right. So also, just like we provide integration uh, for other Office 365 apps, like uh, for uh, the regular Office 365, uh, Word Online, Excel Online, you can actually uh, specify Sharefile as a location to save the document in, even if you're working in an Office, Office 365 app. So the news here is that we also offer that integration in Microsoft Teams itself. You configure this from the Office 365 on the portal. You can select Sharefile, and that would allow the Sharefile tab to appear inside Teams. So it's a good integration. 
So switching gears to Teams optimization with HDX, we announced that at the keynote. This is coming now in Citrix Virtual Apps at Desktops 1906. Um, a quick overview of how this works. So we have Workspace App and we have the VDA. <coughs> we publish Microsoft Teams. And this new Microsoft Teams that's coming out in sometime in July will have uh, a special code that we give to Microsoft. It's an API that they bundle in the application. And in that display area, you see as a blank square, that's where the video portion should be. So that's when we start using the HDX redirection technologies. Uh, we will see in a second. The Teams application handles all the chat and collaboration and the signaling and the authentication. HDX does not mess with this part of the equation. But the video portion is where we kick in. So we provide Microsoft an interface they can call. We then create an element that we call the, the HDX, HDX overlay area. Over a virtual channel, we are start, gonna start communicating with the Citrix Workspace App Media Engine, which is bundled by default with Workspace App. The Citrix Media Engine has access to your peripherals, and in case you want to upload files, you can also do that. And eventually, we're gonna instantiate a local rendering engine where we're gonna display the video. This is the classic HDX technologies for redirection. And in that manner, we offload all the audio, video, and screen sharing capabilities to the endpoint itself. Since I don't have much time, I'm not going to go into this diagram in detail, but it was a step by step of how the call workflows um, go. If you want to learn more about this, you can come to the HDX session right after this in, in C113. The important part is that the audio, video, and screen sharing are offloaded from the VDA to the endpoint. The Workspace App Media Engine will then establish either a peer-to-peer -peer call or a conference call directly by passing the virtual apps uh, or virtual desktops server. So in this manner, we achieve much better efficiency on, on user density on, on the VDAs. So we're going to support teams um, as fully with a fully native experience, so whatever you get from the desktop Teams application, we, wanna want, we want to support it also on, on HDX. <coughs> we are also going to support multiple endpoints. We're starting with Windows, but we are going to provide support for Linux and Macs too. And we are going to offload audio, video, and screen sharing. A few of the requirements we recommend for a good experience. This is somehow a, an industry standard. We want to keep the latency between the endpoint and the Office 365 network below 100 milliseconds with less than 1% packet loss and less than 30 milliseconds of jitter. So this is coming out in 1906. 1906 is going to be re the imminent release that we are putting out. The Teams optimization code is bundled by default with the Workspace app and the VDA. There are no more plugins like we had with RTOP, so that should make your life easier. The tech preview, it's running right now. Microsoft um, is leading that program called TAP. It's going to end in June. And after the TAP program ends, there's going to be an update for Microsoft Teams. And that's how you get the Microsoft Teams piece. <coughs> A studio policy per user, so you can control this. The Teams installer goes into program files. Before it was in, in app data, which created a lot of noise for ZenApp. But now it's redesigned and re-architected to install uh, under program files. A quick comparison between the real-time optimization pack and Microsoft Teams. I guess the most important thing is that we are bundling by default all the code into the Workspace app and the VDA. Um, the media engine it used to be proprietary in the RTOP scenario. Now it's based on WebRTC. The codecs are somehow the same. H.264 continues to be the leading one. The demo, I don't have time, but if you come to the HDX session, we can talk about, about that. And there is a booth 1i that you can see the demo on. And I'm going to close with uh, a few mentions on how to optimize Microsoft Teams. So let's say that your branch office doesn't have internet access, and you want to provide internet because now Teams requires access to the cloud. So you must make sure that the internet breakout on your branch office is reliable enough to provide real-time traffic support. So we recommend SD1 for that. 
the, the next session will do it, uh, go into this in, in much more detail. But SD1 is designed to optimize real-time uh, um, traffic, and it will incre increase the most score, which is how the user perceives the quality, from three to four plus, because it does packet the duplication, and it can fail over to the best um, available link in case the other one is congested. So SD1 is a real solution for real-time traffic. And with that, I think I'm already at the zero, zero. So the summary, we overviewed quite a few things today. So Stefan went over the, the workflows. We reviewed Slack and endpoint management. We reviewed Microsoft Teams and the intelligent workspace. We also reviewed HDX optimization for Microsoft Teams. We are coming into Teams from two different directions, from the intelligent workspace experience and from HDX. We are fully committed to deliver the best uh, experience for, for Microsoft Teams. In the next episode, we are going to hand over to our SD1 friends, and they're going to talk about the optimizations that they have planned, and even further how to optimize HDX um, in case you are using public internets. So with that, uh, I guess that was the last slide. Please rate the session, Synergy 233. We welcome feedback. and Your feedback is really important. We do actually listen to it, and we do try to implement it in future sessions. And yeah, I guess that's it. Thank you for staying with us, and we hope you enjoy the conference. And if you have any questions, just come up here. Thanks.